Well, hello, Rock Tumbling Fanatics, Lapidary Lovers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Standing in front of my Rock Tumbling Station. I heard that Lord Tone is throwing in the towel and going out of business. That's very sad. That's very sad. Oh, dear. Well, hopefully somebody somewhere can pick up some of the slack. Anyway, what are we here for today? Well, this tumbler back here has been in medium grit for, oh, over three weeks now. I kind of got busy at work and just haven't had a chance to do anything with it. So I'm going to take this tumbler off, um, clean it out, and we'll take a look at the rocks inside and see how many of them are ready to go forward into free polish and how many of them need to go back for a little bit more tumbling in the medium grit. So I'll pull that off, rinse off the rocks. I'll meet you over under the lights at the workbench, and we'll take a close look at them with a skeptical eye and uh, sort through them. All right, I'm going to do this the way I always do. I got my rocks here, trying to keep them wet after rinsing them off. Warm day today, though. They're going to dry out quick. Um, I'm going to inspect them closely. Any that I think are ready to move on, I'm going to throw into this bucket, which has some water in it. We're going to keep the rocks wet because we're going to run them through an ultrasonic tank and clean them up. And I want to keep them wet so any uh, remaining grit on them doesn't harden like concrete before they get into the ultrasonic tank. Any that I don't think are ready to move on, they're going to go right back in the tumbler drum. So let me move the camera, and uh, we will start sorting rocks. Get a good close look at them. All right, let me keep them wet. And we'll start sorting. Now, some of these you've seen before in previous videos. Some of them are going to be new to you. Uh, some of these didn't make the cut in a previous video where they went all the way through polish and they had some damage on them. So I backed them up two steps back to um, um, medium grit and ran them again. So some of this stuff, like uh, this uh, Four Peaks Amethyst here that my buddy Jim sent me, has all been all the way to polish and has come back to uh, medium grit. And I'm really liking the, the look of it. Um, I used a lot of extra media here just to try and cushion the rocks. So I think that has helped because I don't really see any damage. Well, maybe a little bit. Maybe the edges still aren't as nice as they could be. Hmm. Maybe I need softer media. I don't know. I throw that back in there. Look at this one. This one looks pretty good, so I think we'll put that one in the bucket. So this piece of really colorful jasper here, I guess it's jasper, it went uh, all the way to a uh, polish, and I wasn't happy with the edge here, but it's looking a whole lot better. I'm thinking that the Four Peaks Amethyst is the softest stuff in here. It's, it's really hard to get a good... Uh, tumble polish on without having damaged edges. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. There's one spot right here, but there's a line of pits right there, so that's why that's rough. But otherwise, it looks really good. That's going in the bucket of water. This strange piece of jasper I found in Arizona. I found this rock counting in Arizona. I'll put a link to that rock counting in Arizona video. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait to get back out there. Maybe, maybe in June I can. And uh, this one, again, it was damaged. This one has nice rounded edges, but still the edges were damaged after coming out of polish. But this is looking pretty good again. I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll throw that in the bucket. Well, here's an interesting piece of brecciated jasper. I found this in Wyoming. I've actually cut a couple slabs off. This has got a semi-flat side here after tumbling. Um, one of the bigger rocks I've tumbled. And this has turned out really good. Um, this has cleaned up really nicely. Nice and smooth everywhere. I think this is ready to move on. Got a couple of pieces of purple agate in here. You can just see some fortification banding there. But it's got, it's not just purple, it's got every color of the rainbow in it if you look hard enough. I think this thing's ready to move on. It is super smooth, the edges are nice. Yeah, more banding popping out there. 
Here's another piece of the same stone. Oh, yeah. There's some fortification banding. A little tiny quartz pocket in the middle of it, it looks like. And again, you got all kinds of colors in there, not just purple. Reds, oranges, whites, yellows, blue. And yeah, I think this one's ready to move on to. That's going to that's gonna be a pretty rock when it's uh, finely polished. Here's a piece of chert. Kind of funky chert. Um, this one, again, made it all the way to polish, and I wasn't happy with the way the, the, the corners here looked. Even though they're fairly rounded, they, they were a little beat up. So um, I took it backwards, and I think it's okay now. So we'll start moving it forwards again. Uh, here's some more funky church. This looks really good. Yeah, this is ready to move on. Uh, oh, yeah. A very interesting piece of multicolored jasper. Super crazy banding in it. A little bit of hematite here and there, too. And it was all rough along this edge right here after polishing. But it's nice and super smooth now. That's ready to move on. I hope I can get a good polish on this because this is going to be a really, really pretty rock. I don't know how well that's showing up on the video, but it's going to be a really, really pretty rock when it's done. So got some more Jasper here. I don't remember where I got this stuff. This might be some of the stuff my buddy Jim sent, but most of what he sent is a whole lot redder. So I don't know. I might have found this in Wyoming, rock hounding. I don't know. But this looks really good, too. I think this is ready to move on. So speaking of Jim's red jasper. Jim, this stuff is just... It's got so many fissures in it and so many pits. You know, this rock was probably three or four times this size when it first went into rough. And I'm still not happy with the way it looks. I mean, I could tumble it until there's nothing left and i'm not sure it would ever be smooth i think i might have to give up on this one jim i might just have to give up on that one set it aside try to do something with a little more promise to it now this one here's got a lot of fissures in it but they're a lot narrower not so deep they actually kind of give it character they're filled in with quartz or something up here to the same level as the jasper I mean, this area here, this area here, never going to clean up. Again, I could tumble it forever. But the rest of the rock looks pretty good. So I think we'll move that one on. The lighting's a little harsh out here. I hope you can actually see these rocks on the on the camera. I mean, the viewfinder's not helping. I can't really tell. Okay, this piece of amethyst, I think it's ready to move on. Here's another piece. Yeah, I think that's ready to move on. We got here some banded iron. I would say that is ready to move on. Oh, good. I'm hoping most of this stuff in here is ready to move on because that would free up a tumbler drum for pre polish, which I'll have a lot of stones ready to go in pre polish, including all these I'm moving on. So, this is a piece of um, Dobell Ranch petrified wood, very colorful. Zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see some of those colors in there. This one, again, was rough on the edges and corners. But it looks like it is in pretty good condition now. So we'll move this one on. What's this big thing down here? Ah, we got some agate. Some agate. Big chunk of agate. It's only got some banding out here on this very edge, on this very outer edge. Some nice fortification banding out there. This is super smooth. The agate always just works great in the tumbler, so this is ready to move on. Uh, peeking out here, we got some green jasper, very green jasper. Um, again, this one, even though the edges were rounded nicely in the rough phases, um, it came out of uh, finish with pitted edges. So the edges look nice again, so we'll move it forward and we'll try again. 
Got some banded iron here. Very colorful. Very colorful. Nice band of color in it. That's ready to go on. Uh, some more funky um, chert here. Again, the sharper edges got damaged somehow during the tumbling process. I think what I'm going to have to do is start tumbling the softer stuff by itself. Not mixing it all up like it is here. So, um, at least in the later stages of tumbling, I think I'm going to have to do that. Maybe in the pre-polish and the polish. Um, the church, the jaspers, um, the amethyst, the quartz. That stuff seems a little bit softer than um, the agate and the banded iron. So, yeah, but this is ready to move on. Stuff's drying out. Uh, a piece of the rock I call flame jasper. It may be more of a church. Maybe, maybe even more of a banded iron. It's hard to tell. It's a strange rock. Found it in Wyoming. This is just a little piece. I've got much bigger pieces tumbling. But uh, it's very pretty. Looks like it's on fire. Uh, but that's ready to move on. Uh, some banded iron here. That's ready to move on. Some more funky church. Oh, yeah. Definitely ready to move on. The edges are nice and smooth. Yeah. I found a big boulder chert out in Wyoming. At first, I thought it was solid jasper because the outside was multicolored like this. You know, yellow, red, green. And it's about the size of a bowling ball. And I thought, well, that was a big bowling ball of jasper right there. So I collected it. But once I started cutting into it, I found that all the colorful stuff was just a rind on the outside. So I've been covered. I've been, so I've been tumbling pieces of the rind. The inside's pretty plain, unfortunately. But this piece is ready to move on. Um, and another piece of the same stuff right there. Ready to move on. Petrified wood. Ready to move on. I don't know where I got these pieces of butterscotch jasper. There's several pieces of them in here. And I have tumbled some of these all the way to polish. I don't remember where I got them. I need to start taking better notes. But this stuff polishes up great. Um, doesn't show any damage. It, it's harder, I guess, than these other jaspers. So these are both ready to move on. Another piece of Jim's... Red jasper, and this is another piece that's really badly fissured and rough and pitted. And this piece I don't think there's much hope for either, Jim. I'm going to set this one aside. I really don't think there's anything I can do with it. Here's another piece of your jasper down here. This one, this one, different story. This one, not so many fissures and pits, few. rest of the stone looks pretty good. I think we'll move that one on. And another piece of it little tiny piece. Uh-oh. It's got a fissure there. It's got a piece of got a piece of ceramic media jammed in it. I don't know if it's showing up. I'll have to pick that out. Let me set that aside so I can do that. Otherwise, it looks like a pretty good stone. Uh, another piece of jasper. I don't know where it came from. Looking really good. Uh, some petrified wood. Probably from the Dobell Ranch. Looks good. Ready to move on. Got lots of four peaks amethyst in here. All the amethyst from that one run got backed up and rerun. And these are looking really good. Yeah, I think those four are ready to move on. This one. Yeah, I think so too. I see another one down here. Yep. Yeah, I think that one's ready to move on. Um, and then we just got a lot of little pieces in here. Let me dig through and see if there's anything big hiding down here. That's just, um, yeah, miscellaneous ugly jasper. Oh, I know what that is. Um, oh, I know what that is. That's a little piece of Pingaling jasper from Australia. Um, this went all the way to finish and it was just terrible. I mean, it was, it did not take a good polish at all. It was all pitted and beat up. I think this is a pretty soft jasper by comparison. I think here's another little piece of it here. I think I had a bigger piece in here that broke up at some point. So this stuff, I think, is pretty soft and probably needs to be tumbled, you know, by itself or with other softer rocks. But both of these pieces look like they are ready to move on. Not that there's much left of them now. 
Yeah, and the rest of this stuff is just tumbling media and chips that are spalled off of other things. So, uh, little tiny, yeah, pieces of the uh, Four Peaks Amethyst that are spalled off some of the big crystals. Oh, there's a, there's a fairly big one. You gotta look through this stuff. This one is really rough. But you know what? That is never, ever going to clean up until it's as small as these. So I guess we'll move it forward. And I guess that's pretty much it. Some little pieces of red jasper in here. Pieces of petrified wood. But they can stay here as tumbling media. They're too small to do anything with. Okay. So let me get my ultrasonic cleaner out. And we will clean up the rocks in our bucket over here. And... Uh, get them ready to go into pre-polish because I'm going to have a tumbler barrel. All right, I've only got, uh, what, one rock in the tumbler there that needs to, uh, that I've decided not to move on. And you know what? I think I will move it on because, well, it's probably not going to get any better with further tumbling. So, so let me get these cleaned up. I'll clean up this barrel really, really well get any traces of the heavier grit out of it, and then uh, we'll move on to pre-polish with these, and if there's enough room in there, we might throw a couple other rocks in that uh, are ready for pre-polish too. All right, got the rocks in the ultrasonic tank. Let me put a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid in here. Not too much, just a few drops. Turn it on, give it a good 45 minutes of uh, cleaning action in here. We'll get the, uh, oh yeah, see the mud coming off the rocks already. It doesn't take long. The ultrasonic action really does a great job of cleaning these things up. Yep. So I'll give us about 45 minutes in there. Let me agitate it a little bit to uh, distribute the soap. And uh, this is only about half the rocks. Maybe a little more than half. I'll put the rest in in a second batch. And uh, in the meantime, i got to go clean up this tumbler barrel really, really well. One of the last of the Lortone tumbler barrels, apparently. I might have to go hit their website and buy some while they're still available. Alrighty, so the second batch is through the ultrasonic. Most of these rocks you saw come out. Uh, but there's a few in here that I have added to fill out the, uh, the batch. Um, nice green moss agate here. Um, petrified wood from the Dobell Ranch with some crazy, crazy neon orange pattern in it. Um, piece of agate, thin sliced piece of agate. Piece of petrified wood from uh, Wyoming. Got a different look to it than the Arizona stuff. And uh, I think some more Dobell Ranch petrified wood. And I think most of these came from the last batch. So, I'm having second thoughts. I'm thinking maybe I don't want to tumble these um, Four Peaks Amethyst with the rest of this stuff because I think they're just going to get beat up again. So, let me pull them all out. And um, they may get tumbled uh, by themselves because my buddy Jim sent me a bunch of amethyst. So, I have enough to tumble it all by itself. So, I think I will do this. Let me root through here and dig all those out. All right. I got all the four peaks amethyst out. I will tumble that by itself. So let me grab some water and some. Oh, first off. All right. So let me uh, add the tumbling media back in. I have rinsed this out just as well as I can to get any remaining medium grit out of it. All right. Let me get some water and some pre polished grit on this. And I'm using 400 silicon carbide for my pre-polish. One, two, I think three heaping teaspoons of that is going to be plenty. I find that with the finer grits, I don't need as much material. So let me lid this up, and we will get it spinning again. All right. We are in pre-polish. 
pre polish, and today is 323. So, on there, and we'll get her spinning again. And I'm going to let that go for at least two weeks, maybe even longer. Uh, I like to let it go for at least two weeks in pre-polish, and well, I've been working so many hours lately, it, it, it may wind up going longer, and that won't hurt it a bit. That'll just make those uh, rocks in there even more ready for a good polish. All right, so we'll take a look at that one in a little over two weeks. Uh, the middle one, which is in rough all the time, is just about ready for another clean out. Stay tuned for that, and I think you'll be interested in what's in there, because if you watched me load that up in a previous video, you're going to be surprised, because there's some surprise rocks in there. I, I snuck a few extra in after it had been spinning for a couple of days, because I had some uh, special projects that I needed to get in there. So uh, I think you'll be quite interested in what is in there. So watch for that video coming out. Subscribe to see my future videos. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.